for accountability by allowing firings to be a little bit easier. The House yesterday passed the VA Management Accountability Act by a wide margin, a bill the White House has not said it will sign, and one that Secretary Shinseki said he opposed. And when the Senate today a similar bill, this from, from Senator Rubio, Democrat Bernie Sanders killed it, blaming the fact that he hadn't read it. As the senator from Florida knows, we have not held a hearing on this legislation. And some of us are old-fashioned enough to know that maybe folks in the Senate might want to know what is in the bill before we voted on it. Independent Bernie Sanders, I should have said. So he raises a good point. You need to read it. Fair concern, Senator. But this entire bill is only three pages long. You gotta love that anchor, old Megyn Kelly there. And look at that, even when you try to crack down on the VA and give them the right to fire people, the Democrats gotta come in and start worrying about their union allies and how upset they might be. What do you think? We're back. I'm Dennis Neal. We've got Peter Unger, uh, Peter Morisi and Rick Unger. Rick, start us off. What do you say about that? Well, look, I mean, I think I've more than established my credentials as being a longtime union supporter, but that said, there are certain instances where it just isn't helpful. This is one of them. I'm glad the House passed the bill that will give a little more control to managers over getting rid of bad people. I hope the Senate will do the same. But the Senate's controlled by Democrats, Rick. They're not going to do that, are they? Uh, actually, in this case, there's a pretty good chance they will because I think the outcry will be substantial if they fail to. Hmm. Peter, what do you say? Well, first of all, the Senator's comments were so disingenuous. After all, they signed off on a health care bill that was as thick as a telephone book and hardly anybody read it but he can't manage to read right. three pages i did so they can pass this bill now at the justice department the, or throughout the government by the way the lawyers are fireable it's a different system for lawyers and no one's complaining the justice department can't get things done i mean we may complain about what it chooses to get done but the justice department runs like a good bureaucracy should and that's the model. There's, there's civil service practices should be the model for the government, it seems to me, as a whole. And uh, yeah. nobody's complaining over there that workers' rights are violated and people aren't given a fair hearing. It's about right. time if the liberals want more government and more government doing more things for more people, then at least make these agencies work. And, and they haven't yeah. done that. I, I, wanna, I, I just want to throw one thing into the conversation because we're all going pretty hot and heavy on the president and the Democrats, who I assign a lot of blame to when it comes to the VA. However, let's not forget, back in February, a bill was before the Senate that would have added $20 billion for, for health care and for education at the VA. Now, you can argue as to whether or not money is the issue or, or it has nothing to do with the problem. The fact is the bill was filibustered out of existence, not because the Republicans thought it was spending too much money. It was because they wanted to attach an amendment to the bill that would have strengthened the sanctions against Iran. And when Harry Reid refused to do that, they killed the entire VA bill. And they admitted it. It wasn't because of the money. It was because he wouldn't go along with it, with Iran as an issue. Guys, that's playing politics with the VA on both sides. Let's not let them off the hook. Okay. For this next question, I already know how Rick would answer. So let me instead toss it to Peter. Peter, what do you think about the bold idea? A Wall Street friend called me the other day to say, don't you see what the VA message really is? Spin off the VA, let the private health com uh, care companies buy it, carve it up, and then give direct vouchers to veterans and let them either go to the VA if they want or go anywhere they want. Peter, what do you think about the idea of privatizing veteran health care? Well, the notion of giving people vouchers is right up there with uh, the notion that we need a national health service. Both the left and the right have what are reasonable sounding prescriptions that would yield very unreasonable results. This is a problem that goes to the very confidence that the American people deserve to have in their government. It's high time that we had real civil service reform, reforms that make the unions unhappy, reforms that make Democrats unhappy, but reforms that don't feed up to the Republicans' absurd solutions. Uh, the notion of giving the veterans vouchers so they can navigate their way through the private sector it is absolutely silly. They need a lot of very specialized care that the VA ought to deliver. The veterans have specialized needs, and that's the place where it should be done. So it's high time we made the VA work like a good government agency. At least make it work as Rick? well as yeah, a, a couple of things. 
couple of things because I hear this argument a lot. Number one, Peter did hit on it. When it comes to certain forms of treatment, there's nobody in the world better than the VA. Remember that the problem right now is not, we have a problem of getting new people into the system. VAs tend to function pretty well, so don't throw it out so quickly. Oh, okay. I think that's actually very well argued. And the, the great thing, guys, is we're going to be back with these gentlemen at some point. And also we're going to have John Fun and more of the Steve Ballsberg Show. But first, today's America's Moment takes a look back at the making of the Emancipation Proclamation. Stay tuned. Abraham Lincoln began the war between the states with a single stated purpose, to preserve the Union. So it surprised everyone when in July of 1862, President Lincoln announced his intentions to issue an Emancipation Proclamation to free the Southern slaves. Lincoln was urged to delay his proclamation until the Union Army could boast a battlefield victory. That opportunity came at the Battle of Antietam, when Union forces drove Lee's army out of Maryland. Five days later, on September 22, 1862, President Lincoln issued the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation, stating slaves in those areas still in rebellion within 100 days will be freed. This action made slavery the focus of the war and ultimately caused France and England to withdraw their support of the South. The following January, Lincoln issued the actual Emancipation Proclamation, stating that all persons held as slaves within the rebel states are and henceforth shall be free. You're watching an American Moment on Newsmax TV. Meet Jim.